Welcome to Biology My Passion. I am Saumya Harikrishna. Today we are going to learn the chapter Improvement in Food Resources. We know we have basically uh, two different sources of food. One is plant based or plant is the source of food that is a major source and also we depend on animal products as food. In order to get this food we depend either on agriculture or animal husbandry. So in this chapter, basically we are discussing these two aspects. But when we talk about the food production, or rather look at the name of this chapter itself, improvement in food resources. Why are we always focusing on the word improvement in food resources? Why can't we think about food resources? No, the reason is our population is increasing at a rapid rate. So we have to increase the production to meet the demand. So in order to increase the production, whether it is agriculture mainly or animal husbandry, what we can do is to increase the cultivable land area. But in India, we know it's already highly populated and country has its boundary. So increasing the land area is impossible. So what is our next consideration? Within the available land area, how can we improve the production? So aiming that, we started a project in independent India called a Green Revolution. Actually, it started in uh, Mexico. We invited Norman Morlow for conducting the same in India. And in India, it was headed by Dr. M. S. Swaminathan. During Green Revolution time, we used a lot of chemicals or it was agrochemical based agriculture. During that time, to increase the fertility, we use fertilizers, chemical fertilizers. To kill the insects and pests, we use pesticides, insecticides. To kill the weeds, weedicides, all these chemicals were used. And it was a kind of mechanized agriculture where we use machines for agriculture. Along with that, we did not forget to use high yielding variety of seeds also. With all these collective efforts, our granaries become full or India became self-sufficient in agriculture. The same way we started another project called a White Revolution. It was aimed at increasing the production in the field of milk. So, when we conducted these revolutions, our production increased, of course. But did it benefit the people? That was the second question. It could not help the people get these grains. The reason being, Though the granaries or warehouses were full, but the people did not have money to access it. So, we understood along with this development, our overall economic condition also should develop. Only then we can think about improving the condition. And also we faced another consequence after this. Because of all these chemicals or the uses of these chemicals, we disturbed the balance of nature or it resulted in different kinds of pollution including soil pollution and water pollution. So understanding all those, we started thinking of sustainable development. The word sustainable, whenever you learn in economics also you might be learning sustainable development or sustainable agriculture in biology. So sustainable means without exploiting the nature, we cannot live because nature is the resource for everything. But when we are using or utilizing these resources, we don't go to the level of exploiting it. Rather, we keep something for the future generations as well. So without completely destroying or completely utilizing, keeping some reserve for the future generation and we are utilizing very judiciously, that kind of uh, agriculture is called a sustainable agriculture. So to solve all these problems, now we are thinking about kind of scientific methods of agriculture, including mixed farming, intercropping, integrated farming, whereas we combine agriculture with the animal husbandry or livestock, poultry, fisheries, beekeeping, etc. We will learn about it in detail in this chapter. When we discuss food, mainly we are getting seven different components important for our body from the food, which are the carbohydrates, proteins, lipids or fat, vitamins, minerals, roughage or fiber and water. Of this, carbohydrates that are the main energy source for our body. So, when we eat carbs, we are getting lot of energy to do all our work or do our life processes. So, carbohydrate is finally getting broken down into glucose, which is the immediate source of energy for us. So, what do we eat to get carbohydrates? 
basically all cereals provide us with carbohydrates for example a rice wheat maize sorghum bajra etc the second major component of food is protein proteins are very important for our body or they are the building blocks of our body so in order to get proteins we have to include pulses in our diet here we are talking about only the plant sources so the pulses means which are the pulses all the dal varieties like a green gram or black gram uh, or uh, arhar dal or lentils gram black gram pea etc then the third is fat or a lipid lipid basically we get through oil so oil seeds are good sources of this for example we get oil from coconut then sesame gingerly oil or uh, we also get from uh, sunflower or corn oil or uh, linseed oil mustard oil and vitamins and minerals are required for our body in a very small quantity but still they are very important to strengthen our immune system so we have to daily include fruits and vegetables and spices in our diet in order to get the requirement of vitamins and minerals last but not the least two more important ingredients or components are there in the food one is roughage or fiber the other one is water both of these have no nutritional value still they are important the fiber or roughage are there in most of the fruits and vegetables so when we consume we get enough fiber and that is important for proper digestion and the bowel movement at the same time water is a non nutrient source but we know without water nothing is possible so we need a lot of water in our body apart from these food crops we also grow fodder crops means the crops which are grown to give or give as food to the animals or the livestock they are basically bursi then oats or sudan grass so you just have to learn the components and at least two to sources of source plants for each of these components of food both of different types of crops require different climate different temperature different photo period etc climate and temperature you are aware of then what is photo period different plants require different duration of exposure to sunlight in order for proper growth and development so that exposure to sunlight is called a photo period photo means a light period means duration so some plants require short duration some plants require longer duration that depending upon that they are grown in different seasons in india main agricultural seasons are classified into two one is called a kharif season which is a monsoon season the other one is rabi season which is the winter season kharif crops are mainly grown from june to october you know in india especially the southern states experience a lot of monsoon from june to october so during that time plants like a paddy cotton soybean pigeon pea maize green gram etc are grown such crops are called a kharif crops then from november to april that is winter season we grow a few plants wheat gram peas mustard linseed etc these are called a rabi crops so you should know the definition of kharif crops and rabi crops it may be asked like differentiate between kharif crops and rabi crops uh, and you should know at least a uh, two examples of these two from 1952 to 2010 period if you take that means due to green revolution and other measures that we took our production increased four times only by increasing 25% of land area of cultivation so how is this possible so a systematic or scientific way of agriculture includes three different steps first crop variety improvement we have to start from the basic seeds that we use for growing the next uh, generation so from there improvement should start that is crop variety improvement then next is the crop production management that means after you sow the seeds we allow them to grow but during the growth stage we have to nurture and give it all the requirements in the correct way otherwise we will not get the expected outcome that is crop production management then next is the crop protection management that is after harvest also we need to protect the plant that means during the growth and also post harvest both the time we have to protect the plant from different threats all those are discussed under the heading crop protection management so we are going to learn these three in detail now crop variety improvement crop production management and crop protection management hope you understood these concepts well if so next 
duty is to read the textbook well. So while reading the NCRT, keep a color pencil or a pencil or a pen with you and underline the main points what I discussed and write down the questions to the side whatever I mentioned because you get a few questions from this part. So in the next video, we will discuss crop variety improvement. So thank you for watching my video. If you like my videos, please like, share and subscribe to my channel Biology My Passion.